Hey guys, my name is Rebecca Reynolds and I'm a storyboard artist, background artist, comic artist and illustrator based in Dublin, Ireland and I'm currently working for Studio Mala. I recently made a Mala Mini as part of Studio Mala's Mala Mini Shorts program. My mini was a bit different as it was more of an animatic than a fully finished piece as I wanted to showcase my storyboarding as I'm primarily a storyboarder in animation. So I'm going to show you how I went about it and the steps I took to create it. Okay, so basically for my mini, it was from an idea I had for a while of kind of wanting to do a music video because I always enjoy boarding to music. Um, so pretty much like a, sh a short music video. The original idea I had was for a, a different piece of music, but I couldn't use that because of copyright discrepancies. But I still wanted to use the, the imagery attached to that piece of music. And I, I thought, well, maybe I can just like lift this idea and just apply to like a, a different piece of music so that's essentially what i did as you can see i have like a, a very rough model sheet on screen here I, I find with boards it's very helpful to have something to go off of just even like a, a very rough model sheet but i'll get back to that in a second what I, what I want to talk about first is the idea so i just like drew some very very rough thumbnails in a sketch pad one day when i was in starbucks and that was the, the the genesis of the idea and I'll, I'll put it on screen now so you, you can literally see how rough the ideas were they're they're really nothing they're very very kind of hard to even decipher but you'll, they'll make sense later on but i think that's the kind of the most important thing about storyboarding is to just get the idea down on paper and even if, it, if it's rough just a couple of thumbnails also to explain what thumbnails are it's just very very lit, small simple sequence of your idea for for a board as you can see here I've got a couple of drawings and they're very simple and it's just this, the story beats basically. So from those thumbnails I kind of went on to make a very rough model sheet of the two characters I wanted to include in my mini. As you can see I did a very rough model sheet here. It's, it's not colored or anything as, as most storyboards or almost all storyboards are in black and white so I thought you know color is not really important. Yeah pretty much the idea kind of developed in to two female characters gearing up for a fight and I wanted to focus on the design and the shot composition rather than the actual battle as kind of a, a means of, of storytelling and like how kind of much information can I show in a very short amount of time like just a very very short narrative and very kind of keep, keeping it simple so yeah here is my rough design sheet for our two protagonists orange and apple yeah these two characters one is quite angular and one is very soft that's kind of what I wanted to to go for just as that, that juxtaposition focusing on apple like I kind of had like an idea of her in my head and like how do, how do I want to convey her personality through her character design. In my head I kind of thought, you know, she's classy, rich, mysterious, intimidating. Her sword is very ornate. It's, it's not like, well actually here's a, here's a close-up of her sword. It's quite simple, but it's very ornate, like her overall design. Oh yeah, and another thing that was something that was on my mind, I wanted to have two very unique vehicles. So I'll, I'll, show, the, I'll show the pictures on screen in a moment. I wanted her to drive like a, a Lotus Elite, like a, a pretty like kind of sleek car. So that was another part of her character design. Her jacket is inspired by I don't know if any of you guys who were into K-pop used to listen to to anyone. There was a member of the band called uh, CL. Her jacket is basically based off of this very specific jacket. If, if I can find a photo of it, I'll, I'll put it on screen now. Yeah, and she also wears kind of he these heelish shoes that are very Lady Gaga, Bad Romance era, sort of inspired. And then kind of on the opposing end, we have Orange. I kind of in my head, I want her to be sort of you know childlike, feral angry, very determined. She has a younger appearance to Apple as she wears kind of oversized jackets and shirts. But at the same time, I wanted that kind of sense of, of violence and trauma to her as well. So she wears a medical eye patch. What I had originally was kind of suggesting was maybe Apple had taken her eye and this was sort of, you know, an indicator of that. Maybe that's kind of like a little bit of potential lore I had in my head. Like, why are these two girls fighting? Oh, maybe one like stabbed the other in the eye. So something like that. <laughs> You'll see in a minute in the storyboards, I tried to do a little bit more environmental storytelling with her, kind of the, the place she lives, so I'll, I'll wait until later to talk about that a little bit more. But again, it's, it's kind of to, to suggest her violent nature. But I wanted her sword to have a bit more of kind of like a childlike sort of 
vibe to it. As you can see, she's like a lot of charms on the hilt, uh, including like a Tamagotchi. I wanted to have that. And then the, the scabbard would have an orange design on it, again, to suggest her namesake. She has kind of more signifiers on her of her name. So she's got the orange scabbard. And then I wanted her to have like kind of like a custom jacket. Like you'll see it more in the animatic, but yeah, sort of orange you glad. But it's kind of like a, a chibi version of her. With her, I was drawing a lot of work from like Japanese illustrators who are quite famous online, such as Manglo, Yukaban, Unpion, and Kung Fu Piggy, so that they really informed her design as well. And again, she has a very specific vehicle. I wanted to have like a motorcycle, so she has a Honda or C213 VS. I, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but I, I thought it was like a cool bike. Now it kind of looks like a, an arcade bike, so I thought that would be kind of cool for her to have. I wanted two characters that really juxtaposed each other. Got like kind of the angular character, the softer character, the, the more kind of mature character, the childlike character, and they're both violent in, in different ways. Calculated with Apple versus Chaotic Orange. So I wanted to try and communicate that with their character design. And I guess overall with the project, because it's under a minute, I wanted to sort of communicate as much about these characters as I could within that time through their designs and, and environments. So I went into the mini with that attitude in mind and also just like wanting to create like a, a cool music video <laughs> at the same time. Okay, so now to get to the actual storyboarding part of the project, given that I've gone through all the character designs and my ideas and, and things like that. Most importantly, I needed like a piece of music, so I pretty much went on YouTube to try and find some kind of royalty-free music that I could use. The original song that I wanted to use was like a, a Charlie XCX, like a remix of a Charlie X XCX song, and obviously I couldn't use that. I, I thought because I'm going for kind of, I suppose, cyberpunky sort of feel, I, I literally look for cyberpunk kind of synthwave stuff on YouTube. So I found a pretty good artist called Carl Casey from Quite Bad Audio. I went through like a mix of his, I picked out a song I liked, I cut off a section that would suit the length of the mini. And more or less based on the really rough thumbnails I showed you guys earlier in, in my sketchbook, I went about planning out my mini. This is like pretty much a version one, like the like roughest of the rough. Because I, I find at the start of a project, it doesn't matter how rough your boards are, just getting your idea down and then worry about cleanup and making it like legible later. Like before you show it to anybody and you're just like plotting it out yourself, just getting your ideas down is, is the most important thing. So I think I'll, I'll just show you this very very rough pass first just to show you how rough it is while i was trying to time it to the music i i was extending the music a little bit cutting it short like it, it was very loose at this stage what, what i guess i'm trying to say is like it's, it's very very loose and i'm kind of editing on the fly as well so yeah i'll just play it and you guys can see just how rough it is <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, the extremely, extremely rough first pass. Like as, as you can see, the timing is quite loose. It's more of an idea of the timing I wanted to use. I, I wanted to eventually time the footsteps here and there was some other, yeah, this part here where she's walking down what is supposed to be a, a, a car door. I wanted that to be timed and this part here where she's also walking to be to be timed. Yeah, it's, it's more, again, it's more of an idea of timing and anything after this stage is finessing. But as you can see, it's literally just wanting to get it out of your head and in front of you, even if these drawings are, are super rough and only you can understand them. And you'll see in the next pass, uh, that's where I'm sort of cleaning stuff up and, and tightening the timing and pretty much just working from the very rough version into something more finished. Here we go with our second rough pass of the Mala Mini. So pretty much, like I said earlier, this pass is where you can start thinking about finessing things, making things clearer to your audience, which I think is one of the most important parts of storyboarding is just overall clarity. The rough stage, you can kind of play around with, with timing and very rough compositions. This is sort of the point where you want to be tightening stuff up, like overall like designs, posing, shot compositions, timing. Yeah, I think what I'll do is again, I'm just going to show you the entire thing, like what it looks like at this second rough pass, I guess the level of the drawings now compared to the previous pass. And yeah, then I'll talk about it.
As you can see, it's a lot more worked up from the previous version. The previous version was extremely rough. So at this point, I'm starting to reference the model sheets. Like, I'm starting to work on camera moves, timing. It starts to look more like a real animatic now, to, to put it not very eloquently, but it's starting to come together. Pretty much my process for this part is that I'll kind of, which like animation, I'll do key drawings and then go back and in between them. So uh, I'll, I'll try and pick out the key drawings. So I mean, like this would be like a key drawing and then, you know, like this would be the key number two, but in between that we have like, we have one, two, three, Two, pretty much two keys. Like, I guess that's another thing I have to say about boards is it's not really encouraged to over animate your boards as that's the animator's job is to animate and you're the board artist and your, your job is to provide a, a storyboard. But I guess with something like this, because it wasn't going on to the next stage of animation, I did develop it a little bit more. Like sometimes boards in production, you wouldn't get to do this level of animation. In, in boards, it would be seen as sort of a waste of time and unnecessary, but I, I wanted to sort of go all out with it, with this one. So yeah, but even then, my overall process for boards would be yeah, just to do like a couple of key drawings and then go back and in between them. Kind of to add a little bit of cushioning or overshoot or just making it feel like a little bit nicer. Like an example of that would be, I guess, kind of the way she closes the compact and it, it goes down and then up. So it's a little bit of a kind of a, it sort of follows into that pose. I guess overall, I was trying to also push the, the shots a lot in this scene where there's kind of like a dynamic drawing says a lot for not having much animation. Like I guess this this part here where she, like as you might've seen in the previous version, like my original composition for that shot, I was not happy with it. It was literally just like a close-up of a car door closing and it was just very hard to read. Yes, but where she hops on the bike, it was her, just a close-up of her fist, like revving the bike. And then I thought that that's, that's kind of boring. So I guess I was trying to push these more kind of very dynamic perspective heavy shots just to make the shot more interesting, even though there's not like a ton of animation in it. I find that's like, a cool technique. Like it's, it's used in anime constantly. This is a, another one. It was actually kind of <laughs> inspired by a shot in Yu-Gi-Oh! by uh, Takahiro Kagami, who was a pretty amazing key animator and he always really pushed his layouts. The only kind of, I guess, quote-unquote animation here is what's going by in the window and her steering, like, slightly, like, but then it's just like a, a slight, just like one pose, pretty much, so. I think pushing your layouts, there's a lot to be said for that in terms of saving on animation. I think if you have a dynamic looking shot, the audience will still be interested, even if there's not a lot moving in it. Another thing is, I don't think I have sketches to show you, but if I was having a problem with composing a shot, I do like a little sketch, like, in the margin. Hello, it's me from the future. I actually found what I was talking about here with the little margin drawing. So it's basically this shot of Orange getting on the bike and I wanted to work out the composition of, of the shot. So I pretty much did like a little, like really simple little doodle here. So yeah, this is what I was talking about. Just a, a very simple drawing in the margin can really help you work out the composition in your head before you go into the, the finished version of the shot. And another thing I guess is obvious, I, I was tightening the timing. I wanted this part to walk to the beat, so. So yeah, as you can see, it's properly timed now. So working out timing was another big part of the second pass, especially like this part as well, where they go in for the kill. Yeah, like I wanted to jump on that beat where the drop happens. And um, yeah, and I guess another thing I was working on this part, I think I mentioned earlier, is just the overall clarity of the board, making sure the audience can tell what's happening. Cause I feel like if your audience can't tell what's happening in your boards, then you need to go back and revise that because the main purpose of boards is to pretty much set up the shots for later. And I think if there's errors at the board stage, it it'll carry into the finished product. You need to let your audience know what's what's on screen and just making sure your posing is kind of nice and clear. Like, especially, I guess, this part where they were running, I wanted to have the posing, like, just be, be nice and, and strong and easy to understand. And also, camera moves are another great quote-unquote cheat to spice up a shot a little bit, so... And another trick from anime is if you have a camera panel, it just looks kind of cool. Like, that, that's, that's sort of it. And then I also did, like, a little bit of multiplaning. Like, I really enjoy multiplaning. Um, I think I had the bike... Yeah, the bike is on one layer, the ground is on another layer, uh, orange is on her own layer, and then the buildings are on another another layer in the background, and, and it just it just looks like kind of it has a 2.5D semi three dimensional feel to it. it. Yeah, it just makes the shot more more interesting. It's very easy to do. So yeah, overall, having like a nice combination of dynamic shots like this with not much anim animation versus 
I guess something like this, where there's like where she kind of pulls the sword out of the scabbard. It, it's quite a lot of posing, I guess, again for an animatic. But I really wanted to get it right, so just to kind of create like a nice sort of balance of shots with a lot of movement versus shots with not a lot of movement. So yeah, pretty much in the second pass, I was just tightening up everything, timing everything, working on my compositions working on my posing, especially compared to the first pass, which was just getting the idea down. This is developing the idea and, and, and kind of sharpening it overall. Okay, so yeah, now we're into the home stretch, the finished version, or I guess the third pass, where I'm pretty much just finishing up. I'm cleaning up all of the timing pretty much done. It's all pretty much just cleaning, like clean up and making everything look nice. Also just checking everything hooks up and the designs look consistent and yeah, just, just the polish stage. So pretty much between the second rough pass and the finish pass, I've sent the second rough pass to Sean, our, our creative director, and he had a look and he you know, would like give me any notes or just say, you know, that, that looks cool and he's, he's happy with it. And then, yeah, after that, I, I just moved straight on to cleanup. Yeah, as I said before, this board wasn't making its way into animation, so it was... I, I wanted to, like, go a little bit, you know, the extra mile with it, make it look, like, super nice. Usually my boards would not look this clean in, in production because there's just there, there's not time and, and as long as things are clear you don't really need to go like overboard on the details. Yeah, I think I'll just, again, I'll just play the whole thing in full and then I'll talk about it. So yeah, that is the finished board. After I finished this, I, I sent it to Sean and he did a little bit more editing with it just to make it like tighter and a bit punchier and he, he did like a great job. But as it stands from my end, this was like the finished product. So yeah, I'll go into the file. My layers are very messy, so don't pay attention to them. Yeah, I don't think I talked much about the Storybook Pro timeline. Like I'll, I'll talk very briefly about it. So, you know, you got your music here and then boards are here, you know, scene, scenes and panel numbers. You got your camera here, like your, your keyframes. I guess I think it's quite similar to like Premiere Pro in terms of editing software, but yeah, it's a great program. So yeah, overall, even though this board is quite detailed, I still wanted to keep things, you know, fairly legible. So I, I tried to keep the tones quite simple. Like I think most characters, they'd have about maybe two tones, two or three tones to them. Not, not a ton. Like as you can see, this part with orange walking along, she pretty much has like two tones and then like a little bit of shading. I wanted to still keep it simple and have the characters like pop to a degree against the backgrounds. And again, I think I mentioned at the start that I wanted to do like a little bit of environmental storytelling as well. So as you can see with Orange's room, she's got like all these kind of like plush toys, like they're a little bit botched looking. I think there's like a better example here where she's she's walking along and if I zoom out, the pan is just like a bunch of teddies that are kind of beat up. And then uh, Apple's environments are very minimalistic and, and very sleek. Like, I think here I kind of gave her like an underground kind of garage sort of thing. But yeah, pr pretty sleek compared to uh, Orange's, wherever she lives. I think I kind of pictured her like living in like sort of an abandoned mall, as you can kind of see here. Yeah, I guess another thing is about backgrounds. Before I became a board artist, I worked as a background artist for about six years. And in that time, I, I learned a lot about boards and, and backgrounds. In a lot of boards, the, the backgrounds aren't really the much of a focus. I think a lot of board artists, are they're so busy concentrating on the the characters and the posing and the acting and everything else that they, they sort of forget about the backgrounds and it, it is quite a hindrance to the background artists as they, they don't really have much to follow but yeah so I think I think it for me I, I usually do kind of try and invest a good amount of detail into the backgrounds just to, to help out the BG artists and I think it's it's you know it's important in that regard so the backgrounds here aren't super imaginative just kind of like futuristic setting again I guess this is like a multi the multiplaning shot I was talking about so you know, this is one layer here, is the bike, one layer here is orange, and then I've got kind of like a, a bit of a haze here for the city just to kind of create some depth, like a sense of depth, and then the city is moving, the, the sky is like static, so yeah, this is like a, a very simple example of multiplaning, but it looks 
to me it looks pretty cool anyways and it just yes it just makes it more interesting i guess another thing to sort of make the characters pop a bit more like i, I would usually just color the whites of the eyes just to have them stand out a little bit because i feel like eyes are quite important for connecting with the viewer so I, i'll usually just like leave them a white i did like add a little bit of highlight on the on the edges here again especially with this shot with the where they're kind of against the night sky just to make them stand out a little more yeah this is pretty much the final version there's not really too much else to say at this point except for i like fleshed out the characters like a, a ton from the the previous stage and the thing with storyboard pro is that everything is a, is a vector like if we zoom in like i can kind of select like you know this is a vector i can move that and like nothing loses resolution which is fantastic it's it's, it's great uh, again i was constantly consulting my, my very rough little model sheet and it was like a huge help so i, I would always recommend to have like a, a model sheet no matter how rough to consult and keep consistency in your designs which is another very important aspect of animation just overall consistency more or less that's kind of it i, I don't think there's anything else to mention really the stage is just just cleaning up making it all look nice making it all look consistent adding in the backgrounds yeah, that's kind of it, and thanks for watching, guys. I hope maybe you learned a little bit, maybe you didn't. I, <laughs> I don't know, hopefully I explained everything okay. But yeah, I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into the process of how I made my Malamini. But yeah, thanks once again. Bye!